Amen and amen. Today, we unleash our praise with a mighty roar. Amen. amen. From Psalm 95, 1 through 3. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Give a joyous shout in the honor of the rock of our salvation. Come before him with thankful hearts. Let us sing him psalms of praise. For the Lord is a great God, the great King of all gods. Let us stand as we raise a hallelujah. Let's hear your voice. You don't have to stand this morning. You got to <laughs> sing with us as we just hear the words today in song. Hear the words in testimonies and witnesses. Sing with me this morning. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a In the middle of the 
Amen, amen, amen. Why don't you have a seat just for a minute and we can relax. As we just start to be present and listen to the messages today, the words that will come from uh, different witness and the words of the songs. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord, for he is our rock. Amen. Come before him with thankful hearts. Let us sing psalms of praise. We share with you today this mes message both in this room and online. We live through the happiest and the most difficult times. Amen. For sure, right now, each and every one of us are experiencing a high or a low. What is your low today? What is the joy in your life? I was going to share a, a story of difficulty in my childhood and a challenge. But you know what? I thought about it this morning, and what came to me is that all throughout that challenge was weaved people who were the feet and the hands of Jesus Christ. And in those times, some dark times, people were there. God was there. They showed love that made a difference in my life. And isn't that what God, isn't that who God is? Today we ask you to think about the challenges and joys in your life. Even those you're going through today, we ask that you hear the words of the witness and song and identify the thousand hallelujahs that are in your life right now. Amen. Good God Almighty, let us praise your name no matter what comes. You can stand and you can sit, do whatever you feel like this morning. can't count the times I've called your name some broken night. You showed up and you patched me up like you do every time. Get amnesia. I forget that you keep on coming around. Ain't no way you'll ever let me down. Good God Almighty. Oh, I hope you Your mercy never stops So why would I assume you'd be somebody that you're not? Like sun in the morning I know you're gonna be there every day So what on earth could make me be afraid? Good God Almighty I hope you'll find me Praising your name
Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Amen. Amen. Jesus Amen. all the time. I'm going to invite the children to head on back to Sunday school. Have an amazing time. We hope you have great fun. And everyone else, have a seat. And we are just so excited to welcome you this morning so that we together can all raise our hallelujahs to the God, to God. This morning we are going to worship, we're going to praise through music, through scripture, through prayer, and through words of testimony by friends and family in this place. We hope you feel free to sing along, clap your hands, stand, sit, dance, whatever the spirit, however the spirit moves within you. But we do ask that you please be careful. <laughs> we are here to raise our voices in praise and song. From Psalm 66, verse 2, sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Jesus Christ. You are 
chosen. Will you share those powerful words of testimony with us? I am chosen. next song is titled Waiting Here for You. The lyrics are taken from various scriptures, but the message it communicates to me is a powerful one that says something very special about faith and worship. Sometimes I feel like we have a lot of pressure to feel like we have to have this great faith, perfect faith, pray really hard all the time and do our best. We expect that if we have faith enough to move the mountains, we expect God to move when we ask him to intervene in our lives. But God is not distant and disinterested in our day-to-day -day affairs. He's the Lord of all creation. He already knows these things and much more. We don't need faith the size of a mountain. Matthew 17, 20 through 21. For truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So we cling to our mustard seed, and we wait here for him with our arms open wide. Let's seek his presence today with this song.
Some of the happiest days of my life, my wedding, the birth dates of all three of my children, their weddings, the birth dates of my beautiful four grandchildren, some of the hardest days of my life, the death of my parents, the loss of my beautiful in-laws that many of you knew, my lymphoma diagnosis. There are times in my life where I have felt overwhelmed with blessings that God has showered upon me. And there are times that I have felt so lost and so separated from God. The lyrics of this next song speak directly to my heart. All of my life in every season, you are still God and I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. Although life does have its ups and downs, my God is always with me, and that's a reason to sing and to praise in all times and in all places. I offer my gift of song to my God that offers me the gift of eternal life. I invite you to do the same.
Creator God, you are the author of relationships. We ask for your wisdom and patience, understanding and love, so that we might obey your command to look to each other's interests above our own. Let our love for each other be fueled by sacrificial love, and may we be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as you forgive us. Lord, we pray for those who are in a season of suffering. You alone know the deepest wounds in need. Help them to trust you, to light the path ahead one day at a time, and walk in your strength and power. May you bring healing through your word, other believers, and even strangers. Thank you that you have everlasting hope in you. Help us to be aware of when our attitude is not helpful for ourselves and others. It is so easy to get discouraged when things don't go our way. We want them to. Or when things get hard. We are so grateful that you don't require perfection from us and that we can come to you with our worst. Help us fix our eyes on you so that we can keep things in perspective. One day, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. Until that day, place people in power who revere you who will serve you for the good of their communities. We humbly plead that by your miraculous power, agendas will be set aside and leaders will work together in humility. We pray that you would work in the hearts of those to whom you give authority. We pray for our leaders to protect our freedom so that we might live out our faith freely without fear. We pray for peace and unity. Father God Almighty, you are with us, lest we never forget in the times of joy, in the times of our deepest, darkest moments, we turn to you. We praise your name. We seek all of the hallelujahs that you provide. Thank you, Lord. Today's scripture is from Psalm 96, 4 through 6, the message. For God is great and worth a thousand hallelujahs. His furious beauty puts the other gods to shame. Pagan gods are mere tatters and rags. God made the heavens. Royal splendor radiates from him. A powerful beauty sets him apart. This is the word of God. And now we are very excited to welcome Allison Maggiari up to share a special testimony. Thank you so much. Really thrilled to be here today to tell you part of my story. Just less than a year ago, on June 29th, 2022, I was at a peak in my life both personally and professionally. The day before, I had returned from an amazing trip to Peru where I got to hike the Inca Trail up to Machu Picchu. And that day, I was incredibly excited at work the day I returned because the following day, June 30th, I was set to accept a promotion and start a new position on the IT senior leadership team at 
Eaton Corporation where I had worked for the past nine years. It was my dream job. I left work that day still smiling about the amazing trip from the week before and looking forward with anticipation to the next morning when I'd be able to start my new position. After work, I went home and began to unpack my suitcase from my trip and started to do laundry when I realized I was running a little bit behind schedule and needed to hurry up if I wanted to make it to the fitness class that I had signed up for at a studio just down the street from my house. I hurriedly changed out of my work clothes and threw on my workout clothes, socks, grabbing my phone in one hand and my keys in the other and started down the stairs in my townhouse where I live alone. I made it down the first flight of stairs, turned on the carpeted landing, and on the first flight of the second stairs down, I felt something was off. My sock had slipped, and I realized that I was falling, falling straight back and then down the entire flight of stairs. When I came to a stop, I realized that my head was on the last step, and the rest of my body was on the cool tile landing in front of my front door. There was a throbbing pain radiating up and down my entire spine. My vision was becoming tunnel-like, and I was having a hard time breathing. Don't pass out. Don't pass out. Please don't pass out. You're okay. You're going to be okay. I kept repeating to myself over and over again. I tried to lift my head and move, but just couldn't. The pain was too much in that moment. For the next 10 minutes, I laid there on my stairs, just trying to focus on my breath and thinking what I should do next. Knowing that I absolutely needed to, I finally was able to muster up enough strength to push myself onto all fours at the bottom of my staircase. I remember screaming out in pain and the agony and trying to catch my breath again as I steadied myself in my new position. I knew that this was more than I could handle on my own and that I needed to call somebody for help. Thankfully, my phone had been clutched in my hand and I spotted it just a couple stairs up. I was able to crawl to my phone and call for help. The next few minutes of making it to the hospital were a complete blur. When I got to the emergency room, an IV was put in and I was taken from x-rays to CAT scans. I was able to call my parents and my sister who immediately jumped in the car and drove to meet me at the hospital. A couple of hours went by and the ER doctor finally came back with a diagnosis. He let me know that I had several serious injuries. I had broken my neck. One of my ribs was broken and had punctured my lung, which was partially deflated from the trauma and a vertebrae in my spine had been broken and the tip had broken off. The doctor immediately put me in a very stiff neck brace to immobilize me and also let me know that my fracture was in a very tricky spot. It was a compression fracture and the vertebrae had shifted and I found out later it was one millimeter away from paralyzation. The doctor let me know that they were going to transfer me from the ER in Beechwood to the trauma center downtown. Upon hearing this news, I completely broke down in sobs. I was terrified. I was in pain. I was worried about missing my next day at work. I was scared to death of the possibility of surgery, and even more so, I was scared, what if I made one wrong movement? Could I be paralyzed for the rest of my life? At that moment, I had no idea that the stiff neck brace would stay on me for 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the next 70 days, but I also had no idea that the miracles that I would encounter and how God would show up for me over and over again as I healed. I found it so interesting that that morning I was at the absolute peak, and by that night I was in a very low valley. That night as I stayed at the hospital, I was scared. Not knowing if I would need surgery, I was not allowed to have anything to eat or drink. I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was tired, and to be honest with you, I didn't know what else to do, so I began to fervently pray. I prayed that my healing was already in process. I prayed for complete healing. I prayed that the doctors would know the best treatment for me. I prayed that I would recover and bounce back from this quickly, and I prayed that I, the pain would dissipate and eventually go away completely. 
And the next day, after meeting with en an endless stream of surgeons and doctors and nurses, the whole time laying flat on my back, hour after hour, and being asked not to move in any way until they knew more about my condition, it was determined that suddenly I was able to go home. They thought I would best recover from home and that surgery was not required. My neck fracture was serious but stable and would get better with complete immobilization by wearing the brace. My lung had reinflated itself overnight and my rib and my um, vertebrae that had been broken would be painful but they would heal on their own without surgical intervention. I was so grateful to be able to get out of bed, to sit up, and to walk very stiffly out of the hospital that day. Four days after um, I went home and was on my way to recovery, I was so grateful to be home, but I felt pretty awful. The pain was bad, but my fear was worse. That night before I went to bed, I cried out to God through my teary eyes and stuffy nose from crying on and off throughout that day, I pleaded with him. I let him know that I wasn't used to feeling in pain. I was used to feeling bubbly and happy, and now I was feeling the complete opposite. After praying, I fell asleep, and when I woke up, the first thing that I noticed is that it was light outside. The sunlight was peering in through the windows. I had slept completely still throughout the entire night. The next thing I noticed is how comfortable I felt. Even with that stiff neck brace on, I was incredibly comfortable, and the pain that was so nagging and unrelenting the day before had completely dissipated. It was gone. It was another prayer answered. And from that day on, just four days after my injury, after my fall, the pain was gone, and it never returned. There were so many miracles that showed up through, for me throughout my recovery. Although I couldn't drive for nearly three months, I lived close enough to Eaton Corporation that one week after my injuries, I was able to make the mile and a half walk and make it into my office and start my new position. After 70 days of wearing the brace, there were some highs and lows and a lot of interesting things that happened during that time. Um, but I was able to go back to my follow-up appointment. The plan was at this appointment that I would get x-rays and I'd be evaluated. I'd be able to take off the, the rigid neck brace. I would move into a soft neck brace and then physical therapy was the plan. When I got there, much to the disbelief of my doctor, she said that the x-rays looked incredibly good. For the first time in 70 days, I was able to take off the brace and actually move my neck. So they did a lot of mobility testing that day where they asked me to draw circles and move my neck back and forth. And again, to the surprise of the doctor, my mobility was at 100%. I did not require the soft brace, nor did I require physical therapy. And I was able to leave the hospital that day and return to life pretty much as normal. She kindly told me with a smile, I mean this in the nicest way possible, but I hope I never see you again. What normally takes people months and months and years and years to recover, I was able to fully recover in 70 days. I am so grateful that since recovering, I've been able to train for and run my first half marathon, climb a mountain to a glacier trek in Iceland, and most importantly, I wrote a book called Decompressed, since it was a compression fracture, about all of the healing and the miracles. There was honestly something that happened every single day throughout my recovery, whether it was the people that I came in contact with, to little God winks that I knew he was watching over me. It was an amazing um, story, and I'm just so grateful for it. So my book was published in April. And I'm not saying any of this to brag about myself, but to really to brag on how powerful and glorious our God is. We serve a God that can and does heal. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you are a God who is with us in the peaks and in the valleys. Thank you that you are a God that can and does heal. Let our hearts stay soft. Let our eyes stay fixed on you. Let our experiences, both the high highs and the low lows, be used for your glory. Amen. 
Allison, thank you so much for sharing. We're so happy that you're okay, and we're so thankful for, for all that God has done through you and the healing that he's done in you. So thank you for sharing this morning. The next song that we're going to share um, is one of, the, one of those songs for me, a go-to song. Um, when life just gets to be too much, um, those times when you want to keep the faith, when you want to keep your eyes on God, but he just feels so far away. Or maybe you just don't feel anything at all. But I want to tell you today that even in those moments when you don't feel like he's right there, he's just as close as he always was. He always is. This song reminds us to just keep going. Just keep going. God moves mountains. He does. Sometimes he comes in a mighty way and blows those mountains away. But sometimes he provides us a shovel and that mountain is moved one scoop at a time. Just remember that God is faithful. He always provides and he always loves us. We just have to remember and we have to believe. Believe that the hard times won't last and that he will never, never fail us. Just remember that mustard seed faith that Laura talked about earlier from Matthew 17. Remember that anything is possible and that you can move mountains with Jesus by your side.
Stand if you're able and raise your voice to the great I am.
gathered in prayer and praise. This church is alive, and the Spirit of God is moving in this place. This past week, we had Matilda Jr. We have Vacation Bible School coming up. We have all kinds of ways for you to put that faith and that praise into action. Find out. We can have you sign up to help with our Walk to Alzheimer's that will be happening in September. We're getting our team together now because we want to walk as a team. We are out in our community. This week is Vacation Bible School. Our YSP is out on mission as we speak. And next Sunday, they're going to share their experience. And our children are going to sing for us. But we really want you to remember that beginning next week, we have our new summer worship schedule. Modern worship at 9 o'clock. Traditional at 11 o'clock. Each and every Sunday, those will also be live streamed. But will you sing? Will you sing truth? Sing with your soul. What a beautiful sound we all make as singers to our Heavenly Father's ears. Let's use our God-given voices to sing praises to the one who gives us these voices. And as we, we walk, ugh, wake up each and every day, yep, and walk through our day. We pray that the lyrics and the melodies of our faith ring throughout all places, our schools, our workplaces, our communities, our homes. As we walk into church each and every Sunday, may we bring this same excitement about sharing in the privilege of lifting our voices to our God. We are joining in a great song of praise, brothers and sisters, that has resounded through the ages and will continue to resound. We are called to sing just as the very court of heaven is singing right now will you sing together let's raise a thousand hallelujahs to our heavenly creator and band i'm going to ask you to start with the bridge one c right hand column praise to the lord to the lamb because i know we praise and raise our voices together praise to the lord ready here we end. Praise to the Lord, to the Lamb, to the King of Heaven. Praise for He rose. Now He reigns. We will sing. today. Go out, be transformed. Go out knowing the love of Christ is in your heart and be the change in this world. Thank you, Allison, for sharing. What a blessing. Go forth in peace.